What's up you guys, Josh Tongley here. Today I'm going to talk about one of the secret techniques Neville Goddard used back in the day that will get you to manifest pretty much anything you want fast, straight up. And if you don't know who Neville Goddard is, dude, you're missing out. He's a guy who is way ahead of his time, who taught things in a way that really resonates with me, which is why I want to bring more attention to his work on this channel. Anyway, one of the main problems I see with people who are learning about Law of Attraction and Manifestation and trying out all these different types of techniques is that they're still missing a very important element when it comes to reality creation, where they emphasize a lot on repeating a bunch of affirmations or trying to believe really, really hard, whatever that means, or wanting something badly in order to attract what they want. And the intention is good, don't get me wrong, but here's the problem. Without them realizing it, they're vibrating from a place of not having because they're just thinking of their desires. And you'll notice that when people say things like, one day I'm going to attract such and such, or one day I'm going to make X amount of money, or one day I know for sure my body's going to be healed. I believe, I believe. Now on the surface, it sounds really good. And in a sense, it actually is commendable because it's at least one step forward to moving towards your desires. But if you're going to be putting out a vibration where you're always talking and thinking about things manifesting one day, well then based on the law of attraction, and if like attracts like, then guess what? You're going to attract more wanting. And it's going to always be one day. That's why Neville talks about the difference between thinking of your desires and thinking from it. Because when you think of your desires, it's still future. It's something you want. Why? Because you don't think and have it. But when you think from your desires, you're coming from a place of acceptance, of assumption, where you center yourself in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And I'll talk more about this later. Remember, consciousness is everything. And you and me and everyone else, believe it or not, are living in a world of imagination. And what Neville wanted people to know is that our perception isn't bound by our five senses. That reality is so much more than we realize. Because for a lot of people, they rely so much on what they can see, what they can touch and taste and smell and hear, and on their own restricted reasoning for what they understand to be the quote-unquote truth. So for instance, they see that there's hardly any money in their bank account. So what happens? They start to feel poor. And so they accept poverty as their reality. Or they experience pain in their bodies or some sort of sickness. And so they accept having a body that is forever going to be struggling with physical issues. Or they hear things from those around them, whether it's family or so-called friends, that they're not good enough or they're a bunch of nobodies. And so they accept that that's who they really are and start identifying with all the negativity thrown at them. And so when you think of your experiences here as the only reality, then of course it's so easy to end up living a life of limitation because of reason and logic will tell you that miracles are impossible. But when you look within to your own consciousness, using your imagination, the place of infinite possibilities, then that's when the impossible becomes illogical and miracles become normal in your everyday life. Because whatever your state of consciousness is, Neville says, will determine your reality. Okay, so how do you do it? How do you manifest whatever it is that you want in this world? Well, it can be summarized in one powerful word, acceptance. Acceptance. Acceptance of what? And what Neville means is the acceptance of the end, of the desired state where you assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled. All right, but you might be like, Josh, how the heck do I get to that place of acceptance and create the feelings? of being rich and successful and healthy when I'm none of those things. And in fact, I feel the exact opposite right now. Well then, this is where your imagination comes into play and why it's so powerful. Because you and I know that when you use your imagination, it can get so lost in imagining. What tends to happen? The feelings just follow. You don't have to force it. You know what I'm saying? Can you see in your imagination already being that person you want to be? like a successful business owner or an amazing partner to your spouse or a well-known actor on a stage or whatever. And Neville says that whenever you become completely absorbed in an emotional state, at that moment, you're assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. And if you're persistent enough, that state of consciousness, that state of being will eventually become your world. As within, so without. It's like a mirror. Remember, all things come from within and not the other way around. Because everything you experience is a result of your own emotional mental pictures pushed out. Now, as I mentioned in my last video, it's best to do your imagining as you're falling asleep. But you can still do it during the day, like during times of meditation or prayer, whatever you want to call it. But make sure that when you do it, 
to make your vision so clear and so vivid. Not like watching it far away on a movie screen, but you're actually in it, like a first person point of view. And you'll want to use your five senses where you literally see and touch and taste and smell and hear things. You want to feel yourself into it until you give it, as Neville used to say, all the tones of reality. For example, you can imagine yourself, first person point of view, holding and feeling a stack of money in your hands, smelling and counting crisp bills. Or imagine yourself in your new home, feeling and sitting on your new leather sofa or lying on your soft and very comfortable bed with memory foam pillows. Or imagine being on a plane, buckling your seatbelt and feeling yourself moving and lifting up into the air and landing in the country of your desire. Whatever it is, just imagine it. Feel its reality. And do it in such a way where the imagined state is so real that when you come back, as Neville says, to the objective world and find that it's not the same as the imagined world, you get shocked because of the sensory vividness of it all. And if that happens, then you know you're doing it right and that your subconscious is accepting what you're imagining. And as you do this, I'll say this over and over and over again, don't ever worry about the how. How is it going to happen? Don't worry about it, ever, because here's the magic. Neville says that when you accept the end, where you assume the feeling of your wish fulfilled, listen, it automatically wills the means to that end, to that realization. You don't have to worry about some external God or force outside yourself doing it for you. Now, dude, Neville says that the deeper, dimensionally greater you has already done it. All you got to do is move to that place where you encounter it. Live in the end. Walk as though it were. Because it's like planting a seed in the ground. Remember, these are just the beginnings of the things you harvest. It's like ordering food at a restaurant. Okay, you might not get your food right away, but one thing's for sure. It's going to come eventually, right? So be confident in what you've done. You know what I'm saying? Just be chill. Be patient. Look, real talk, you watching this right now tells me that deep down, you have certain desires within yourself. There are things you want to do, things you want to accomplish, things you want to have. And let me just say this. Don't downplay your desires. Don't do that. Being spiritual doesn't mean you don't have any desires, for goodness sake. Neville says that when you feel a yearning or desire for something, whatever it is, that's God speaking to you. It's His communion with you. Folks, desire is sacred. Desire is sacred. And the fulfillment of those desires will ultimately reveal to you your own identity, that you are so much more powerful and amazing then you think you are so much more. So listen to your heart, you guys. What is it saying? What is your heart saying? And know that all you need or desire is already yours. It's already yours. Not tomorrow, not one day, but it's yours now. It's already done. Accept it. Assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and move forward because you will get what you believe. Yeah. All righty, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please do me a favor, like and share, because based on the algorithm, it actually gets more people to discover my work. Plus, it also gets this message out there. And if you try out this technique, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and the bell right next to it, because YouTube does a thing now where you won't be notified of any of my new videos unless you do it. And I pop these out every single week, so you don't want to miss them. And don't forget to register for my free online training where I go even deeper when it comes to manifesting your desires. So check that out. Link's in the description. Like I always say, more's coming. Till next time, I'm out. Peace.